Thousands of Iraqis have gathered in Baghdad to protest against government corruption and to pressure parliament to form a new government. Well, these people gathered in Tahrir Square. You can see those live shots there are supporters of the prominent Shia cleric Muqtada al-Sadr. He's called for this demonstration to put more pressure on the prime minister to form a technocratic government and to carry out reforms. It's just the latest in a series of a number of protests in the country. Let's get more on this and speak to Abu Bakr al-Shamahi, who is uh, here with me in the studio. Abu Bakr, uh, just incredible, the number, the sheer numbers of people that are there protesting in Baghdad. Tell me, what are they protesting about? Um, well, Sadr actually delayed this protest by a day from yesterday, and he deliberately timed it to, um, to time in with a parliamentary session today to vote on or proposal to vote on the new, uh, a new cabinet. And that goes to the root of what they're calling for. Um, last year, anti-government uh, or anti-corruption protests started in Iraq, and they actually slowly petered out, and they've been reinvigorated by uh, Sadr's uh, call for his supporters uh, to join in with these protests. Now, Muqtada Sadr he's specifically referred to things like corruption and the formation of a technocratic government, uh, the end of the sectarian division of uh, positions of power in Iraq on the basis of, say, whether someone's Sunni, Shia or Kurd. Um, the problem is, is he faces entrenched interests who, uh, who oppose him from the Shia side as well as from the other communities. So Muqtada Sadr also has a big populist base, as we can see from these protests, huge amount of supporters. However, I mean, he's, he's managed to get that populist base from from kind of years of especially being uh, anti-American over, over the years and, and forming militias. Um, and, and, and the problem is now other forces are starting to eat in to that uh, popular support of his. So this well, is a way of invigorating that support. Well, this is exactly what I was going to ask you. What is the significance of the fact that it is this Shia cleric um, who is leading this call of protest? Well, like I say, it's it's because it's important to remember that just because he's a Shia cleric doesn't necessarily mean that all those who are backing him are, are, are Shias, and it also doesn't mean that all Shias back him. So uh, people from within Abedi's own party, uh, the Dawa party, are, are, are intensely opposed to, to Muqtada Sadr, and they are also Shias. And um, the fight against uh, Daesh, for example, has has given the opportunity for several Shia figures within the government who were seen as part of the elite, as opposed to Muqtada Sadr, to actually form their own militias and. And actually get popular support on the streets as well. And that has eaten into uh, to Muqtada Sadr's uh, own support base. OK, so what is going to happen now? Will, will they be able to force Abadi out? Mm. The problem Abadi faces, and, and these, these uh, protests, let's remember, aren't necessarily there just to force Abadi out. Abadi actually said himself that he also wants this new technocratic government. The problem Abadi faces is he doesn't have support and he doesn't have backing. He's not a particularly powerful figure. Um, even within his own party, the Dawa party, like I said, there are many who oppose him. In fact, the majority of his own party pro probably oppose him right now. Um, so he faces a choice right now. He's seen as a pro-American figure. Does he lean towards the Iranians, um, or does he fall? Um, and, and that's kind of the, the most likely equation right now. And Abu Bakr, just remind us of the roots to all this. What has been going on in Iraq? What is the status in terms of the economy, politically? Are things really hard? Yes, I mean, with the, you've got a country where a significant proportion of the, the landmass of that country has been taken over by non-state institutions. We're talking about Daesh here, uh, who have taken over most of the north and, and the west. And then you've got the, the Kurdish region of Iraqi uh, uh, Kurdistan, uh, the Kurdish regional uh, body, where, who, who, you know, is completely separate from the Iraqi government and out of the central government's control. Uh, corruption is an endemic problem within Iraq from the, the post-war uh, years. Uh, and continues to be until this day. Okay, Abu Bakr, many thanks for talking us uh, through that.